Hey everybody, welcome, sorry about that, to Live with OK Clarity. Today's live, we're going to be talking about medical hypnosis. All right, um, a quick disclaimer that everything discussed tonight is for educational and entertainment purposes, and this does not replace um, professional mental health or psychological um, wellness advice. All right, so my name is Brooke Greenwald. I am a certified hypnosis practitioner and a certified medical support hypnosis practitioner and a fellow of the International Board of Hypnotherapy. It's my honor and pleasure to share with you tonight all about medical hypnosis. Medical hypnosis really changed my life. Um, I had IBS and I tried the traditional Western modalities of pelvic floor therapy, FODMAP diet, and I went to GIs and nutritionists and I couldn't find the relief I sought. And it wasn't until I discovered hypnosis that I was able to find the relief I sought. And I was so blown away how it worked because I was so skeptical, like most people didn't hear about hypnosis, I didn't know what hypnosis was either. And when I saw its results, I said, I need to learn more. So I went back to school to learn what hypnosis is, why it works, how it works. And it's really my passion to share it with the world. All right, um, so let's talk about what is hypnosis. Let's brief, briefly bust some myths and then go deeper into medical hypnosis. All right, so what is hypnosis? So hypnosis is a birthright that we're all born with this ability to go into trance. It is not supernatural. We all experience a state of trance in our lives if we realize that or not. I'll give you an example. If you were driving in a car and you didn't know how you got there, that was a state of trance. If you were so engrossed in an activity that you loved and you momentarily lost time or space, that was a state of trance. So we are in states of trance um, throughout our lives, right? Artists might be more in that flow state, which you could also consider a trance state. So it's not something that you never experienced before. The reason why I feel like it gets a bad rep is because of stage hypnosis. So stage hypnosis is theater. The person who acts like an animal on stage is consciously or subconsciously um, acting like an animal for your enjoyment or his. If he would say no, it wouldn't work. So again, if he would say no, it wouldn't work. What does that mean? That who was really in control the whole time? The person acting like the animal, not the hypnotist. So nobody can control your mind without your consent. Nobody can control your mind without your consent. That means you are conscious and in control the whole time during hypnosis. So what does hypnosis feel like? It feels like a wonderful state, a real deep relaxation. You know, when clients experience hypnosis, they're like, how do I know this is hypnosis? It just feels like a beautiful, relaxing feeling. And I'm like, yes, that's what it is. Um, and it's a skill. So the more you practice it, the better you will be, just like all skills. So if this is something that's important to you, the repetition really helps you get better and better. Okay, let's talk more about hypnosis. So why does it work? How does it work? So basically, the, sub the subconscious stores all our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, and memories. And it's our programming, it's our software that is being projected on the outside world, and then we're attracting thoughts, feelings, people, and ideas that are coherent to our programming. All right, let's break this down even more. So a computer has software, right? Whatever software is in the computer, it runs. The computer doesn't say, oh, I like this software, I don't like that software. Whatever software is in the computer, that's how the computer runs. So if somebody doesn't like their software, what do they do? They could upgrade it, right? <laughs> so same with us. Our subconscious stores all our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and memories. And based on what's there, the law of correspondence states that the way we experience the world corresponds to our dominant subconscious thought, feeling, and belief. And that's with the law of projection because we project our programming on the outside world and the famous law of attraction, we attract it back to us. And then we have transfiguration, which is pipelining, which is energetically, we give off our programming and then it gets reaffirmed. So it's like this loop that whatever programming we have gets projected and then that projection is what comes back to us and we're experiencing our world in this loop of our projection of our programming. So how is this helpful? And how, how is this helpful for medical hypnosis? So 
how this is helpful for us is because the subconscious is the doer, right? It does whatever you tell it to do. So again, whatever program is there, it runs. Oh, so wait, that means I could change my programming, right? If I, whatever program is there, it runs. In hypnosis, I could program the program that I want. I could program the thoughts, feelings, action steps, and images of what I want in my life. Now this is huge, and I know it sounds very simple and very easy, oh, it's so good to be true, how is it possible? I know, trust me. When I went to my hypnotherapist years ago, when I had IBS, and the hypnotherapist said, and without you realizing it, your gut is healing itself. And I was like, what? How is that possible? I just tell my gut to heal, and it heals? What do you mean? I did my pelvic floor, nutritionist, GIs, my life was so restrictive and you're gonna do, say something so easy that could give me the results that things that I worked so hard didn't accomplish. It was like mind boggling. But then the proof was in the pudding because it works. I was like, wow. And once you learn the rules, the laws of the subconscious, we could use it to our advantage. And yeah, we could get the amazing results that we seek. So it's really, really empowering. <laughs> and I see some fires, so yes. Especially when it comes to medical conditions. So I wanna pivot and talk about medical hypnosis because I know firsthand how exhausting it is to have a medical condition that goes on for a long time. For me, it was since I was a kid, so I had it for decades, and you feel despondent. Am I ever gonna get better? Do I have to live with this for the rest of my life? And then you discover a tool, a resource that could actually really help you. And I, it's my passion and purpose to share this with the world. And it's an honor when I'm able to be a witness and hold the space, be a facilitator for others to get the results they seek for their medical conditions. So let's talk more about how this works. So the subconscious guides the autonomic nervous system, which is basically the involuntary nervous system, right? which is our heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, digestion. So in hypnosis, our body is in parasympathetic nervous system. So the autonomic nervous system has two branches, parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic is the optimal states of living. Basically, you're in homeostasis, your immune system, digestion, reproduction, higher mind thinking are functioning at peak levels. It's, it's the place we want to be. And Sympathetic nervous system is fight and flight, stress response, our immune system, digestion, and reproduction is depressed. Now, there's a purpose for the sympathetic nervous system. It's very helpful, right? You know, we, we go back to when we're hunters and gatherers. If I'm hunting and gathering in the field and there's a lion coming to get me, then yeah, my body, which is primed for survival, um, it's gonna shut down and all the blood is gonna rush to the main organs to flee. And that is very adaptive, like, yes, that's gonna help me stay alive, right? And I hope one thing, I hope you take away a couple things from this live, but one of them is that our body loves us and it's trying to protect us. And sometimes it comes out in ways that are not helpful and we'll talk about that more. And then with hypnosis, we could really work through those things. Okay, sorry, I deviated a little. Back to um, the sympathetic nervous system. So when our body is in sympathetic drive, right, our immune system, digestion, reproduction shuts down and the blood rushes to the main organs to survive. Now again, that could be helpful if there's a lion out to get me, but let's say there's no lion and the lion is someone at work or my family, right, and I can't flee. So what happens with all that pumping blood? There's nowhere to escape, right? It's stays in the body and our immune system could get suppressed and we could you know if we're constantly in sympathetic drive it could lead to um, issues that we don't want so by being in hypnosis our bodies are ready in the optimal state of healing which is the parasympathetic nervous system now couple that with suggestion so in hypnosis we program the mind for what we want so if I have IBS, I'm gonna program my mind, my subconscious mind for healthy gut. If, for example, I might say my brain and gut are working in harmony, uh, my body um, digests my food perfectly, I am eliminate perfectly, I have healthy bowel movements every day, um, my gut is comfortable, right? So we program what we want. I could program that whatever I eat and drink, my body processes it perfectly. 
So we saturate the subconscious with thoughts, feelings, and beliefs of what we want because again, the subconscious is the doer. It does whatever you tell it to do. So we're telling it what to do. We're programming our mind. So that's called saturation therapy where we saturate the subconscious with the positives. But then we might still have negatives, right? If I had IBS for 20 years, I might have 20 years of programming that my gut doesn't work, it's horrible and terrible, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that when analytical hypnotherapy, we could look at those negative programmings and we could release them and upgrade the software. Um, okay, so let's talk a little more about the subconscious and how it works. So the subconscious is programmed to be right and it is an association making mechanism. What does that mean? So we have our conscious mind, our subconscious, and we have the critical factor. The critical factor is the gatekeeper to the subconscious mind. Now until age seven to 11, the critical factor is wide open. So all the programming goes straight through. So let's say I was in first grade and I made a mistake and there's, there's this story of a girl, I mean, it really happened where she spelled um, cat K-A-T and everyone laughed at her and she had programming of, from seven years old that don't speak in public, it's not safe but she didn't even remember the story. It wasn't even like, she never thought about it until when she was 30 years old and she had to publicly speak. And after publicly speaking, the critical factor, the gatekeeper, the subconscious mind checked the programming. And because the subconscious is an association making mechanism, it saw, oh, speak in public, shut down, shut down, sympathetic nervous system. And the idea of publicly speaking, her throat constricted, she couldn't speak. So the body's always trying to protect us. The problem is, her body didn't grow up, right? It had programming from when she was seven years old, but here she's 30 and she wants her promotion. She needs to publicly speak. The body's trying to protect her, but it's not helpful because she wants to speak. So in hypnosis, she was able to look at that programming and upgrade it. She could reinterpret that event with new beliefs because it's never the event, the traumatic event that's the program. It's the, what we accept it to be true about the event. For example, if this, this happened to someone else, let's say, and, and the teacher told her, oh, you're so stupid, everyone laughed, and the girl said, huh? what do you mean, everyone makes mistakes? No, you're stupid, right? Would she have accepted that programming? Maybe not, right? So it's what we accept about ourselves to be true about the event. So her 30-year-old reasoning mind was able to reinterpret the event of when she was seven and say, everyone makes mistakes, it's normal, right? It was the teacher, maybe was having a bad day, right? She put it in perspective and she was able to upgrade the resource and she was able to program what she wanted, which was it's safe for me to speak in public. People love to hear me speak. I am smart, etc., etc. She was able to program herself speaking and see herself speaking with confidence and people loving it. And as you can imagine, she got her promotion. So here's a very simple example, but how our subconscious stores all our memories. And we could be triggered and not even know why, right? Or we could um, have these reactions and be like, consciously, that doesn't make sense. But why? Because it's all stored in our subconscious. So in hypnosis, we're so lucky because we could look at it and then we could amend it and we could fix the programming to what we want, right? So it's really, really our superpower, hypnosis. It's, to me, it's like the opposite of being a victim, right? You know. A lot of us, I mean, I definitely felt like a victim a lot of my life until I learned this resource, a victim to the IBS, a victim to the situation. And then once I learned, wait, I could actually program what I want. I could choose what I attract in, in this world. I could choose how my body functions. It was like so, so empowering. And that's why it's my passion to share with you. So maybe you leave this live and be like, wait, Maybe I can program what I want. Maybe I don't have to accept this reality that I don't like. Um, all right, let's talk more about some things to consider with medical hypnosis. So the words we say are very, very powerful. Our body is always listening. So something that maybe could take away from this is the things that we say about our body, we wanna be a little careful. Because again, everything we say is programming and software. So especially when we have a medical condition and I know how exhausting it is and all the fear and the anxiety and the sadness and I'm not taking away from that at all. So please don't take this the wrong way at all. But at the same time, if we don't want to hold on to this condition and we want a certain separation, 
one trick is to say the condition instead of my condition. So instead of saying my IBS, I say the IBS. Because by saying the IBS versus my IBS, I'm already putting some distance between me and this disease that I want to get rid of, and I'm already showing my body, wait, this is not mine. I don't accept it, right? So again, the body's always listening, and the body's always trying to protect you. So being careful with the way we even talk about our illness says a lot about which direction we're going. I hope that makes sense. And also, you know, I know it's common speech to say things like, this is killing me, my back is killing me, she's giving me a heart attack, she's making me turn gray, right? But once I learned about the secrets of the subconscious, I get very careful. I try not to say those things because I don't want any of that programming in me, right? So try, maybe you can walk away from this life thinking, the words I speak is programming. Even for a joke, I don't want to get used to saying such things because the subconscious is very literal. Another trick of the subconscious, it's very literal. It doesn't do figurative language. It doesn't do metaphors. So it takes it very literally. So to be careful with the way we talk about it. And instead, you know, I had a client that she had IBS for a very, very long time and she goes, my gut's retarded. And I totally empathize and feel with the pain and the frustration of having to deal with this and not getting relief. Said instead, maybe we could say, I feel you, I see you, right? We want to acknowledge the pain and hurt. We're not, we're not doing denial, we're not pushing it away. Acknowledge it, I feel you, I see you. And instead of saying, and instead maybe say, what's your story? What's your message, right? IBS, what do you want me to know? What do you need from me right now? Because again, the subconscious and the body is brilliant and it's trying to protect you. So you could say, wait, Brooke, how is giving me a disease protecting me? Mm, excellent question. Well, in hypnosis, I talk to the issue and I ask it questions like this. What's your story? What do you need to release? What do you need to get better? And the stories I get back are mind blowing. And yes, a lot of times they're worse than the condition. So it really is the body's way of protecting. And again, we go really deep, really fast for the client that's ready, willing, and able and we get stories. And um, I could share with you a little bit, for example, there was a client, she had osteoarthritis for like over a decade, and she was a nurse, and she got injections, and she did diets, and she did everything. And after three sessions, the inflammation of her fingers reduced, and she was crying, and she showed me she put on her wedding ring for the first time. And it was like, wow, right? And again, she was really ready to release the programming, and when in hypnosis, I asked the osteoarthritis, if you took a shape or color or form, what would it be? And again, it's this beautiful protocol, but I'll just condense it very shortly. It was like this black lob on her heart. And then we moved a few feet away and I asked it questions. What's your story? What do you need to release? What do you need to feel better? And then what came out was my mother didn't um, believe in me, she said I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't good enough to go to college, she didn't approve of my husband, and it went on and on, all this negative, um, I guess you could say programming or beliefs that she took in from her environment. And this was an older woman in her 50s. And, and then because she didn't feel good enough or deserving of a good life, she, when she, she worked full time, she overscheduled herself. So she didn't give herself breaks by lunch and she just worked and worked and worked because she didn't feel deserving of self-care. And when I asked her subconscious what she needed to get better, it was boundaries, self-care, and believing that she's worthy and deserving and enjoying, she's allowed to enjoy life, she deserves this, right? So we programmed the reversal of all the negative programming. And we programmed that right? She's loved and she's deserving and she's smart and she deserves her life and her husband's one, etc. Like the, all the, all the care, the reversal of all the negative. And then we also program action steps of taking time for self care, saying no, and all the things she needed in her life. And all these suggestions, by the way, I just want to put it out there. We create together. So all suggestions are created together. I'm writing down everything the client's saying, I'm reversing it and then repeating it back to them and they're editing every word. So all hypnosis is self-hypnosis because they are really programming their own mind with their own words. So I'm just guiding it, but they're consenting, we're creating everything together. So they're like a co-therapist. Um, so that, because it has to feel good to them, obviously, right? They're programming their mind with suggestions that feel good to them. And again, 
obviously this is much more and I'm simplifying it just to give you like a little snippet of what it could feel like, but um, it's really, really, really beautiful. Another possibility to think about, I'll just check time, we're getting close to the 25 minute mark and then I wanna take questions if anyone has. Um, so the concept of negative payoff and secondary gain. So again, back to the premise that the body loves us trying to protect us, right? So why would it give us a medical condition? So sometimes we can look at negative payoff and secondary gain, which means that the client might be getting something out of having this disease. For example, someone hates their job and then all of a sudden they get sick, they don't have to go to work. Another example, someone who doesn't have boundaries and gives and gives too much and they can't say no and, and their self care is not what up to par, right? They need much more, but they just give, 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 give and and their needs are not necessarily being taken care of. And then they get a disease and what happens, all of a sudden everyone has to take care of them. They become the person everyone has to turn to, right? So by getting this disease, they're sort of getting their needs met. So again, the body loves you, is trying to protect you. Do you think the body is gonna let you get rid of the disease if you didn't deal with the underlying needs that the body is getting because of the disease, right? So this comes up a lot. So when I work with clients and I ask them, I had a client who I, I asked, when did the symptoms get worse? So when did you first getting symptoms? They said, oh, when I found that my mother's Alzheimer's was getting worse. And then he made a connection that he said, I'll have this disease to keep her alive. So do you think the body's gonna let him get rid of the disease unless he deals with that huge, huge piece of information that this disease is keeping his mother alive. Now, of course, consciously that doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter. If subconsciously that's the connection that was made, we need to work through that. So there's a special protocol called removing psychic cords where we're able to work through that. Another thing to consider is a connection to a family member who's alive or deceased. So this is also common that sometimes Someone could have a medical condition that their parent or let's say grandparent had. And I had a client also who had a medical condition and his parents said, oh, you, you, just like our, your grandfather, you have just like what he has. So all of a sudden there's this connection, this psychic cord connecting him to his grandfather. So again, there's a special protocol where we could release any cords that we don't want to be attached through this way and then keep all the good cords, right? There's something beautiful about your grandfather that you want to be part of you, absolutely. All the love, all the good stuff, but maybe you don't want to be connected to your grandfather in a disease, right? So there's a special protocols working through that. So that's also something to consider. So things are very, very deep, right? Like you look at a medical condition, you IBS, oh, my stomach's bloated, right? Or like, I'm uncomfortable. You're not thinking all these deep layers and that's what's beautiful about hypnosis. We could go straight to the source really quickly for the client that, again, is ready, willing, and able and get answers, which is really, really empowering, right? Because once you know, then you're able to work through it and come on the other side. Um, another thing, <laughs> checking time. One last thing that I want to mention, which is also very, very interesting. You know, we all know about placebos and how effective they are. Now there's something called a nocebo. So nocebo is the opposite of placebo, which is if a doctor gives you negative news, a, a negative prognosis about a, your medical condition. So like doom and gloom, et cetera, et cetera. Now that is very problematic because the way programming occurs, right? We accept thoughts, feelings, beliefs to be true about ourselves and then the subconscious runs that programming. And how does programming occur? Authority figures, peer groups, high emotion, repetition, and when we say yes. So a doctor is an authority figure. So when we get news from a doctor, it's like go straight into the subconscious because again, programming occurs with those five conditions. One of them is authority figures. So we have to be extra, extra careful not to be taking in nocebos, right? Negative prognosis about a medical condition. And I had this with a client who had IBS and said, oh, a doctor said, if I had it for three years, I'll have it for life. And then he accepted that to be true. He's like, oh no, it's a three year mark. I'm never gonna get rid of this. So, right, so that's a nocebo. Or another client who's, who said, um, yeah, I always thought this is a condition that you just have to live with, just like a, this other condition. I was like, okay, do you wanna believe that? We could choose to believe it, but if you're gonna believe that, then you're gonna only get up to here. But if you believe this, you could get up to here, right? For example, 
not an equivalent, but let's say you were looking for, to get a job and you find out you're going to ask for this much money. And then you find out your friend is getting this. All saying you're going to ask for this. You know, it's possible, right? So we decide what's possible in terms of healing. If we say, oh, I only think I could get this much better, then yeah, you're not going to get past that. But if you have a belief you could get this much better, you can get there. Because the subconscious doesn't know the difference. It knows whatever you tell it. And that's our superpower. We could program our mind for what we want. We determine the possibilities of what is possible. Right? There was this quote, the impossible is a possible that didn't happen yet. And I feel like that really rings true with hypnosis because we get to decide the possibilities. I mean, I was able to witness what I felt like were miracles myself. And obviously my training, I heard about even greater miracles of what's possible in hypnosis. But there's really no limit. The only limit is your beliefs because it's our beliefs of what's possible that really, really shapes our reality. All right, I really hope um, that you walk away feeling more empowered, more inspired, and I would love to answer any questions. We have a couple of minutes, so let me know if you have any questions. All right, if not, have a great night, and thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed, and if you have questions after, you could always um, reach out. I'd love to hear from you and have a wonderful night, everyone. Thanks for being here and thank you. Okay, Clarity. Oh, one last thing I want to say. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, that all medical hypnosis needs a referral from a doctor, right? It does not replace medical treatment. Um, all hyp um, medical hypnosis is adjunctive cure to medical treatment. So all my clients have a referral from a doctor and the same with regular hypnosis. If someone has a psychological um, diagnosis, they need a referral from their practitioner. So hypnosis is adjunctive cure to medical and psychological treatment. It does not replace medical or psychological treatment. So I just want to make sure that I stuck that in. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for your time. Bye for now.